atoning, of his precious blood atoning. Then I repented of my sins and won the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. I heard about his healing of his cleansing power revealing how he made the lame to walk again and he caused the blind to see and then I cried dear Jesus come and heal my broken spirit and somehow Jesus came and he brought to me the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. Plunge me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. I heard about the mansion he has built for me in glory. And I heard about the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea. About the angels singing and the old redemption story. And some sweet day I'll sing up there the songs of victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He saw and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. How many know that we got to be hand in hand with the Lord at all times? And I want him to keep my hand in his. Song says, Jesus, hold my hand. As I travel through this pilgrim land, there is a friend who walks with me. Leads me safely through the sinking sand. It is the Christ of Calvary. to help me do the best I can. For I need thy light to guide me day and night. Blessed Jesus, hold my hand. Jesus, hold my hand. I need the 
you there, blessed Jesus, hold my hand. Let me travel in the light divine that I may see the blessed way. Keep me that I may be holy thine and sing redemption song someday. I will be a soldier brave and true and ever firmly take a stand as I onward glory you may be seated amen praise the lord praise the lord hallelujah are you hungry for the word well you know what i believe we can just pull our feet up to the table as brother hoy brings the word to us today and we can just feast on the word of god amen let it become a part of us amen Take it home with us and just feast upon it and let it get on the inside of us. Amen. Get down in our spirit because we'll learn to walk and to talk with the Lord. Amen. We'll learn to be an example that he calls us to be. Brother Don Hoy, if you would come at this time, God bless you. Amen. We love you. We thank you. We appreciate you being here today. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's give the Lord a big hand. Let's do that. Amen. got Willie's microphone, so I know it's anointed. <laughs> Thank you for everyone staying. And uh, we'd like to uh, invite you to please come out tonight. We need your support. The Lord needs you. And I won't be long before you this morning, and I promise I won't be long tonight if you come out. And uh, just a, a small advertisement for that, just going to preach... Why the Lord sometimes makes us weak. Tonight we're going to be speaking about that. 
I want the Lord to have his way. I'm a Pentecostal preacher. I'm just, you know, just for what it's worth, a Pentecostal man of God. So I always believe that anything is possible. Where two or three are gathered together in his name, there he is in their midst. And I believe that holds connotations that you never know what's going to happen. Amen. And, and that's how we live, and that's what we believe, and, and therefore God blesses us. I tell people I'm not better than anybody. I'm blessed. Amen. I'm blessed because of God's presence. Amen. Well, it's good to see everyone. Some folks that I don't know, some of my family aren't here. I guess they heard I was preaching or something. And... Um, my wife would love to be here, and if she was here, she was going to sing a song that I love and goes so well, and I just feel I'm not complete because she's not here, but uh, I, I'm trying to think of the song that she was going to sing, uh, He'll Do It Again. How many of you have ever heard that song? So just keep that thought in your mind. <laughs> Amen. Because he is going to do it again. I believe in the days in which we live right now, if you want revival, you can have revival. But you have to see that need in your life, your own personal need. Amen. And I'm here this morning. I serve God my whole life long because I love him. I don't have to be constrained. I don't have to be forced. You know, before, you know, when I was a younger preacher, you learned a lot about trying to manipulate people to get them to come to church. And they'll give away things, put on the altar. I said, Jesus, you're here because you love the Lord. And so thank you for that. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. But this morning, we're preaching about Lazarus. Going to try not to be real long before you. Somebody say amen about that. Praise the Lord. I knew I'd get some amens. That's why I said that. We uh, appreciate the pastor sharing his pulpit, and I know he's going to be away, and some of the folks had to go right away because they had to drive down below uh, near Gastonia to go to this wedding. But um, I, I pray for my pastor, and I thank God for, for Brother and Sister Perry. And I want to tell you something. God's not done with them. And I want to tell you something else. God's not done with this church. I can prophesy that to you. And because God's not done with you, and at point blank, just flat, God's not done. Amen. There's a work to be done, folks. And he wants to show us what faith can do. He wants to show you what faith can do. And it doesn't matter. That God's, God says he's not done with marriages. He's not done with your life. And I want to preach a little something to you this morning about, and if pastor's sneaking on there looking, hey, pastor, how you doing? <laughs> we love you. We pray for you. I pray for you every day. I pray God lifts him up and encourages him. Him and Sister Perry. <clears throat> But uh, we want to preach a little something that says that your end may be God's beginning. Your end may be God's beginning. And we go through that as we serve God. You'll find out that just because you love him doesn't mean that you know him. Just because you love the Lord doesn't mean that you know enough about him because he wants to be with you everywhere. He wants to heal your body. He wants to set you free. He wants to answer prayers. That's the greatest thing that you can find out is that you know God good enough that he can do that because, folks, we are going to face some times before the Lord comes. The Lord spoke this to my heart, told me, it says, before I come, it says, you will think we are already in the tribulation. And I believe that because it says throughout the New Testament what the times are going to be like, not something to be um, afraid of, but it's something to seek dependence on the Lord about. So I depend upon him for paying my bills, for giving me a job, for giving me health, for blessing my church, for filling me, for helping me. God wants dependent people this morning. And uh, I just want to read a text. Uh, this is and where I'm going to be taking scripture from is from John chapter 11. You can look in there. and Most people know the story of Lazarus. Beautiful story. And uh, but but I, this helps me to, to keep it all straight and in line. This is in uh, it just uses my text, not the story that I'm going to be um, sharing from. But John chapter 8, 29, I love this verse of Scripture. And he that sent me is with me. The Father hath not left me alone, for I do always those things that please him. What pleases the Lord? Obedience. 
<clears throat> Brother Bud was sharing about that, about being obedient to God. I want to be obedient, so if I sneak down here and maybe lay hands upon you, don't be afraid because I want to be obedient. There's nothing that's more important. That means putting that text down, if the Lord says put it down, because we are Pentecostal people. And we say that anything is possible in God's name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I just want to read it again. And he that sent me is with me. The Father hath not left me alone, for I do always those things that please him. And that means obedience to him. I think it's Hebrews chapter 10, verse 9. It says, I have come to do thy will, O God. He takes away the first that he might establish the second. And that's, that's a, a, um, a policy of the Lord. It's a policy of the Holy Spirit. He comes to establish things in life. And sometimes we want things that God doesn't want in our life. Sometimes we want something good, Sister Bobby, but God has something better. Hallelujah. You know, do you ever, anybody have, ever have that experience? You ever have that experience? God takes something away because he wants to give you some, something so much better. You know, we put our, our, our you know, so I tell him at my job, I says, how do you, you know, how do you make it here? He says, I keep my expectations low. <laughs> That's how I make it through, a, through my week. But I don't keep my expectations low with the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, this is a story about three people, a family that loved Jesus, and Jesus loved them. It says that. Let me jump over here so I can know where to refer to. <clears throat> and it says, da, 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 yeah. In chapter 11, verse 3, <clears throat> it said that he whom thou lovest is sick. And it says that that literally means that he was weak. And I don't know if Lazarus was just a weak person, got sick a lot, but that Jesus, Mary, and Martha were friends, and they were close. How many love Jesus and can say that you're a friend of the Lord? Hallelujah. I don't have to be constrained, Brother Gary, to come here this morning. I come here because I love the Lord, whether there's a whole bunch or just a handful. And believe me, I preach to, pe to crowds that were over 300 and some, sometimes as few as three. I know what it means to say that it said we're two or three to gather together, because in our first church, sometimes it was two or three that were gathered together. But it's the same Jesus. It's the same Jesus that's in that little crowd as he's in the big crowd. Big crowds don't get me excited. I'm excited to be here as much as I am in a big gigantic crowd because it's the same Jesus. I'm not going to get excited. I'm not going to jump on the bandwagon because there's a bunch of people here. I'm excited because Jesus is here. In whatever circumstance you find yourself, you can get excited because you know that Jesus is here. And it's an experience that we come to. I can remember one of the darkest days of my life. And I'd still been gone through it. I was traveling home, Jamie. I was in my truck and going through uh, uh, Tennessee on 40. <clears throat> and something caught my eye. And I'd been going through it. You know, and, and it was on the, on the side of the road down in the gully. And it was a reddish, rusty orange color with black surrounded all around it. And, and it just made me whip around, Sister Debbie, <laughs> and to look and says, what is that? And it was a big Hereford bull. And don't ask me how I drove by this thing and noticed all these things, here, but I did. It was that profound. Stuck in the mud up to his belly. And you want anybody tell me what were those black things all around him? Vultures. Vultures. And I had to say at that moment in time in my life, I says, Lord, that's what I feel like the devil is doing. And then trust me, even Christians that should know better, they, they, they just say, well, they're just waiting for you to sink. They're waiting for you to fail and they're waiting for you to fall. But I, let me tell you what, Jesus loves to resurrect things. He loves to bring things back to life. He lives for that. And that's the ultimate power that you come to in your life sometimes that you realize that, oh, it's so bad. I just want to throw in the towel. And the Lord spoke to my heart that time. He said, he says, when the smoke clears, you will have seen that I was with you all the time. It can get stormy and it can get fiery. But let me tell you what, that God is with you all the time. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. He that keeps Israel never slumbers nor sleeps. He wants you to have peace about what you're facing. Some people, we just live in trepidation. 
We live in fear. God doesn't want you to live like that. You know, the Bible says, I think, I'm not positive, but I know it's in the Psalms, but I think it's Psalms 110, where it tells us that, that it says it's vain for you to stay up late, to wake up early, and to eat the bread of sorrows, because so he gives his beloved rest. What does the doctor, when you're hurt, he gives you one of those muscle relaxers, doesn't he? And it does me no good at all. I might as well be chewing peanut M&Ms. It does, doesn't do anything for me. Matter of fact, man's cure a lot of times will make you feel worse. And I know we all take the medicines and pills and things like that. But Jesus is my healer this morning. Jesus is my healer this morning. And I don't choose him because I can't get to something else or I can't afford something else. I choose him because I love him. And I know that he loves me. And that's why Mary, Martha, and uh, Lazarus, they loved Jesus. They were like a family. It says there that they loved him. They loved him. Because they saw what he did. Just they had that, that excited feeling. Jesus. Jesus is coming. And it's not like you see some friends, you know, you run and hide when you see them pulling the driveway. Don't, I'm not looking at anybody. I'm not looking at a soul. <laughs> Draw the shades. Quick, honey. Turn the lights out. Such and such in the driveway. And they run. The kids run around scrambling. <laughs> And they're giggling and laughing. You need to hush. Just hush. It wasn't like that with Jesus. And I'm sure he didn't live there, but he, he visited there a lot. He spent time with them. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. And I thought, you know, it made me think. I'm not looking at anybody else either on, on this issue, but it made me think about church attendance. You know, and this is, I don't have to be constrained to serve God. Sometimes we're just a handful here, but the ones, we're here because we love the Lord. And I know you serve God because of the same way. Hallelujah. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. At that name, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. Every devil's going to grovel at his feet. Jesus is coming. Do you feel that way this morning? Jesus is coming. It's going to be all right. Jesus is coming, Brother Chris. We went through some things and we're going through some things, but you know Jesus is on his way. Jesus is on his way. We love him. It was that same Mary that anointed Jesus' feet with that oil and that hair. You know that oil, how much that oil costs? A year's wages. She wasn't doing it to get anything from Jesus. That's where you really enter in. When you, you do it because I will serve thee because I love thee. Thou hast given life to me. He loves to resurrect things. He loves to turn things around. But something's got to happen before he does that. It's got to get dark. It's going to turn bad. And honey, I'm be very, I know probably every one single one in here because you love the Lord and you've gone through this. Verse 3, it says in chapter... Uh, 11, verse 3 of uh, John, it said, uh, He whom thou lovest is sick. He whom thou lovest is sick. Jesus is touched with the feelings of our infirmities. Don't think that he's not. Don't think that he does not care about what you're going through. The Bible, see, this is the chapter where it says that Jesus wept. And he wept for a lot of reasons. It also said twice that he groaned in his spirit at their unbelief. You know, we had to go through some things to really know who Jesus is. Just because you love him doesn't mean that you know him. You have to be reminded because trials and tribulations, they're going to come. The Bible says, I think it's Proverbs, it says, Be not afraid of sudden fear, neither the desolation of the wicked, when it cometh. For the Lord shall be your confidence. That's one thing I get from serving God and being here. When I can, when the doors are open, I have confidence. Cast not away your confidence. It has great recompense of reward. I know that he's going to, he whom thou lovest is sick. And I know that they, one of the reasons that they were just, just blown away by the Lord because they saw what God had done in their midst. He saw how that he healed people. He saw that he opened the eyes of the blind. He healed lame people that were sitting there for years and years and years. They had seen what Jesus had done. But you know, sometimes when we have that love, we don't understand things that come our way. 
Think it not strange, the Bible says, concerning the fiery trial, which is the trial, is the so, though some strange thing has happened unto you. But he says, rejoice, inasmuch as you are made partakers of his glory. Amen. What is glory? Glory is knowing what Jesus does, why he does it, and how he does it, is knowing that Shekinah glory, getting in his presence, know that he heals. Amen. How differently would you face what you're facing right now if you knew Jesus just a little bit better? Woo! Thank you, Lord. There's no dark alley. There's no thing, you know. Job said, the thing that I fear most has come upon me. You don't have to live like that. Sometimes we live with, uh, walking around like there's a dark cloud falling us everywhere we go. Jesus does not want you to live like that. And some are here maybe tonight that you have the weight of the world on your shoulders. And Jesus says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. My, my yoke is easy. My burden is light. You got to let him do a work. You got to let him do that work. And it says, he says in verse four, it says, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God. He said, they love me, but they just don't know quite enough about me yet. We ate together. We did things together. I don't know what they did. Play shuffleboard back in those days. I don't know what they did for leisure time. But they enjoyed being with each other. And they said, here comes Jesus. Hallelujah. Now it says in verse 5, it says, Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. And I'm going to break away from reading some of these verses. I just want to keep within guidelines here. But verse 6, it starts to change a little bit. And sometimes it, things change in our lives. How many have ever had that happen? It just changes. You know, some people get better and some people get bitter. You know, some people let the Lord have his way and other people, they just fight it for their whole lives. You've got to submit yourself to the will of God. God knows what he is doing. Say that with me. God knows what he is doing. And the love of God doesn't mean that he, things don't happen to us and come into our lives. They just continue to happen. But Jesus can fix it. Somebody say, Jesus, fix it. Hallelujah, Jesus, fix it. Whew. Sometimes that's all you can say, but kind of he takes away all those little crutches and all those little safeties away from us. So we will look to the Lord, you know, makes us desperate before God. That's how I was during the time that I, the things that I went through and it says, Lord, I can remember sitting in my truck, Jamie, in, in the fetal position, holding on to my Bible, because that's all that I had to hold on to. That's all that I had. But I was saying, Jesus, fix it. Jesus, fix it. And he said, if you hold on, boy, you're going to see my glory. You're going to see my power. You can see that I have control. I am in control. Sometimes you think that the devil's in control or carnal people are in control. But God's in control. God's in control. Verse 6, it says, when he had heard, therefore, that he was sick. He knew exactly what was happening. He abode two days still in the place where he was, he was. Boys, I know if that was me and my wife, Sister Bobby, I would be in trouble. Go ahead and say amen, Courtney. <laughs> it doesn't matter if you're a half unconscious. If she hollers for my name, I know I'm going to come running. And she said that to me before. I said, fix this. Fix it. And that's how we are with Jesus. You know, sometimes he says, Lord, just change it. Fix it. Help me. And that's just the beginning. But it says he abode two days in that place. And everybody, I'm sure some of the scholars in here, you know why he did. There's a superstition that the Jews used to have. We talked about that in Sunday school. That was excellent, Brother Bud. And some of the thoughts and points that were brought up about, you know, how tradition could get in the way. Or, or you know, uh, Jesus, I tell you what, his ways are beyond comprehension. In a myriad of ways, he has all kinds of ways to fix what you are in. To take care of it, to provide for you. But they had this silly tradition. They believed that the spirit of the person, once they died, hovered over them. Hover over the grave for three days. You know, and that's a dangerous tradition. And this was called the days of weeping. 
the days, and it's, not, it's normal to mourn. That's a normal thing to do, to have happen, because those things are traumatic. Those poor people down in Florida, I says, and I says just help me to be empathetic, Lord. I always pray that. I said, Lord, just help me to understand, because that's what Jesus did. He's touched with the feelings of infirmities. And I'll tell you what, I'll just confess to you, when I was young and I was just so into what I was doing that it was hard for me to consider what other people were going through. The, I'll tell you what, the Holy Spirit will make you empathetic. The Holy Spirit will make you care about other people. And I pray that God help them. But one verse of scripture that came to me was in Psalms chapter 9. I think verse 14, it says, the wicked will be turned into hell. And, and, so, and so shall every nation that forgets God. You know, you remember what Brother Weissman prophesied and told us that we're going to see a few more of these things happen in this country before he comes to get his church? Because to, to, he's knocking on the door, folks. He's knocking on the door. He said, stay close. Stay close to me. Hello. It says, if, 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 if I knock on the door, it says, he, he will come into him when you open that door. Got to open that door. Jesus is trying to stir us up. Stir us up and get our attention. That's what he was trying to do with Lazarus, Mary, and Martha. And, and it says, Lord, it said uh, two times, I think here it is, verse 21 and verse 32, that Mary and Martha both took occasion to say, Lord, if you had been here, our brother had not died. Lord, if you'd been here, our, our brother had not died. And you know, sometimes we think that, it's, 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 Lord, if, if, if I was just close to the ifs, the what ifs. Anybody ever get the what ifs? Oh, Lord, have mercy, help me. Hush. Sometimes I tell myself, just be quiet. Stop listening to you. Because <laughs> the devil will have every practical reason why you went through and how that it was your fault. It's your fault. And it's says, and what you need to do, and we obsess. How I many of you have ever obsessed about things? It means you don't let it go. You go crazy. you like JoJo the circus boy running around trying to fix it. And you can't fix it because only Jesus can fix it. There's not a physical way out of this thing. It's only a spiritual way out of this thing. And you'll do it, Gary, just like you've ever done before, is get a hold of the horns of the altar and not let go. It's how God's going to fill this church again. I believe it. I'm not saying it so I can get amens or, or any kind of thing, but I think, Lord have mercy. This church is beautiful. It's on a beautiful road. It's paid for with beautiful people. Why don't you think that the Spirit of the Lord would want to fill this place again? God's on the throne. God's not done. He wants to let you know, well, I've not got any talents. You know, I, I think that's one of the reasons why Jesus wept. He was getting so sick of the whining. He's, oh, God, we need shut up. I've not got any talents. There's nothing real special about me. I've got nothing to give to the Lord. Give him what you have. That's what he wants. He doesn't want you to be special. He wants you to be obedient. Anywho, Lord, help me stay on track, Lord Jesus. Help me to stay on track. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Your end may be God's beginning. Your end may be God's beginning. They had the mourners, you know, they were just, you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to sink. It's going down. I used to work on commercial fishing boats when I was younger, and, and trust me, when you think you're going to sink, you're, you're scrambling for one thing, and it's getting that survival suit. But I said, Lord, if I had to depend on that, I know I'm going to die because it takes about an hour to put the stupid thing on. You know, it's like to put on double-knit slacks with static cling. You're just like, oh, oh, oh. And they will run. Let me tell you what, if there's any kind of thing going on, what they'll do I said, I said, it, it was just a little threat. It was a little storm. And it says, how did he get his survival suit on already? I says, I'll just wrap around it and float to shore. I says, I'm not going to even try to put that stupid thing on. It's ridiculous. But sometimes you know that Jesus is just going to come through, and that's all you need to know. That's all you need to know. Hallelujah. I know that Jesus is going to be there. 
But it says, you know, it says that he groaned in his spirit twice. Now, Heather, I was thinking of you because we both love horses. I grew up on horse farms. She's got a horse PhD for crying out loud. Thank you, mom and dad. But they said that he groaned twice. And I think it was especially because of their unbelief. You know, it doesn't have, you don't have to have educated um, uh, faith. It doesn't, it's, faith is not an educated thing. That's you just dropping the things that you normally lean on and grabbing hold of Jesus and, say, and tell him that and say, Lord, I'm holding on to you for healing. How many's holding on for somebody in your family for healing? Lord, I'm holding on for, to you for, for their healing. And what kind of glory do you think the Lord will receive if because of that they are healed in Jesus' name? The person that you love is sick. The person that you love is going through a divorce. The person that you love is just having such a hard time mentally. And believe me, a lot of Christians are going through a lot of things mentally, having hard times. All you had to do was a simple answer. You could save yourself hundreds of dollars. Get a hold of Jesus. Get in a room, lock yourself in. Instead of the theology, use a little bit of neology and get a hold of God once again. We need to do that again, folks. I'm telling you, we need to do that again. It said he groaned in his spirit, Sister Heather, and he said that was like a horse, knee. <laughs> it made me think of you. And this is, and they do that for, for a lot of different reasons, but, but some because of fear or, or they're becoming alert or, or, you know, it's just... I don't, can't imagine now Jesus would do that. But he was just so, I know, I'll just put it this way. Jesus probably gets exasperated with me once in a while that I know what to do and I just don't do it for whatever reasons. I choose the easy thing to do. I choose something else to do. But he did that twice. And the Bible says, this is where he says that Jesus wept. And I want to read a couple scriptures. I'm going to get ready to close. Believe it or not. See, I told you I wasn't going to be long. <laughs> you might not remember what I said, but you remember said he didn't preach long. Glory to God. I'm in here in total support of Brother and Sister Perry and you folks at this church. And I believe God answers prayer. And I'm going to pray. I want to pray for a couple of you. I want us to have a little altar service. I want to leave time for that. Because that's what's going to fill the churches in these last days is seeing people, the Holy Spirit, seeing the Holy Spirit do things. Because it's not a me thing, it's a we thing. And it's not even a we thing, it's a he thing. Hallelujah. And if we give glory to God, if we sing out praises to him, if we're obedient to him, God is going to move in our midst one more time. I want to read verses, the end of 41 and 42. With a thought in mind of that, that scripture that I shared at the beginning, and he that sent me is with me. The Father hath not left me alone, for I do always those things that please him. Because trust me, the devil can make things look dark. Remember that scripture in Proverbs I shared you about? Be not afraid of sudden fear, neither the desolation of the wicked when it cometh, because it is coming. If you serve God, he is coming against you. But he doesn't want you to live in fear. What's going to happen next? Because Jesus is coming and he is going to fix it. If you hold on to his unchanging hand, he says, what you thought was your end may be God's beginning. He has to take away a lot of junk that gets in the way in our lives. A lot of things that we build is protecting you know, us from ever going through anything. That's why they built the Tower of Babel. There's been a lot of abuses through the years in church, but we still save, serve the same Lord. He still loves you. He cares about your life. He cares about what direction you're heading in. He knows about you that are looking for jobs and, and you're looking for your life to get better. But just because you love him doesn't mean that you know him. You know, and, and uh, Jesus, I'll share that in just a minute. Let me read this verse of scripture, two thoughts, and then we're going to close. We're going to ask the Lord to, you know, if, if, if you're brave enough and obedient enough, once we give an altar call to answer that altar call, I can guarantee you right now that God is going to answer that prayer. God is going to change your life. God's going to tell you, says, listen, I'm with you, and I'm going to help you. But he said, 
At the end of verse 41, he says, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. Oh, my goodness. If I could have something, Lord, I, he already knew that he was going to be with him, that he was going to set him free, that he was going to change things for him. He says, I thank you that you have already heard me. What does that tell me? He spent time with Jesus. He knew Jesus. How do you know Jesus? By calling on his name. Not going to, to bridal school or Bible school. That's what we used to call it where my wife and I met. We met at bridal school. And the first time I ever got to, to ask her out, and that's another whole issue at a Bible school. It's a whole other thing. You don't even want to know. We had what they call a two-foot rule that you couldn't get within two foot of one another. That's how they serious were to keeping your attention directed towards the Lord, sister body, not other things. But he had already spent time with the Lord. Hallelujah. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to get a hold of Jesus. I'm not going to obsess and visit all my relatives and talk to my mom and my uncle and see if I can borrow some money or they can help give me some advice. I'm going to talk to the Lord because he owns a cattle on a thousand hills. Where sin did abound, grace did much more abound. You got to get a hold of the Lord. And they thought they knew Jesus. They thought they sent that message to Sister Bobby. He says, tell them the person that you love is sick, is going through some trials and tribulation, going through some hard times. He'll come. I'll know he'll come. First thing he did, we're going to stay two days here before we go get to see him. And the first thing is just astonishment. Lord, if you would have been here, if you had not waited, that, that everything would have been all right. Don't do the what ifs. Just don't do them. Verse 42. And I knew that thou hearest me always, be, but because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they might, may believe that thou hast sent me. And if I believe anything in these last days, there's a lot of people, honey, that are standing by. Just a watching. You know, I don't want to get in this thing, Brother Chris. Chris. Brother Chris, you've been in this, and you've been faithful. There's a lot of you folks. You're faithful. You're just here. When, when the doors are open, you're here. We need to. There are good people in here. We can do it, folks, because Jesus will do it. If we just get a hold of God, and this is not be just bystanders. We need to see the glory of God. Honey, listen, if you, don't, if you don't start to move, if you see God heal bodies and set people free, and it says nothing's going to move you. But I did that because of the people that stand by. Get committed. You know, you want God to be committed to you, or are you committed to him? Be committed to him. And I don't believe in any kind of manipulations because I believe that you should come because you want to come. We've got to work on our want we got to work on our wanna. Let me tell you what, that means the flesh has got to die so the spirit can arise. What I say in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 9, it says, He takes away the first, that he can establish the second. There's some things that are in the way. I just want to close with this thought about intimacy because that's all that it's, it's all about. Jesus doesn't want some place to visit. He wants some place to live. Jesus doesn't want some place to visit. He wants some place to live. A vessel. A vessel. Do you know that God, as long as there's a, a vessel available, this is an Old Testament about the widow woman that, that couldn't eat. And what did she need? She didn't need welfare cheese, and she didn't need a lot of things. She didn't need handouts. She needed the Lord Jesus Christ. And she says, go get every empty vessel that you can get. And as long as she provided empty vessels, he, the prophet filled it with oil. Pour the oil in. Here's my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsting of my soul. Bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He was filling their life. It's another commercial for tonight's service. <laughs> You know what? We're living in the last days. 
let me tell you this. We are running out of time. If you're wanting to give your life to the, God, to the Lord, don't say, don't do it tomorrow. Do it today. Determine in your heart. And sometimes that, that's what it takes is some determination. You're running out of time to give your life to the Lord. You're running out of time to give your all to the Lord. Do it now. Do it today because time is running out. The devil is seeking to wear down the saints of God and just, just have a haphazard attitude towards church. Listen, you get your heart into things and your whole attitude will change about it. It's not because I'm preaching or pastor's preaching or, or special things are happening. There's not enough special things to try to motivate the flesh to want to seek God. It's got to die. As Paul said, it's got to die. You know, verse Psalm, and I'm getting ready to close here, honest. I, I, I don't like that. I don't even like to say that, you know, because people start counting how many times you said, I'm getting ready to close. <coughs> Because I work. I know what it's like to work, Mark. I know what it's like to work. You know, and sometimes preachers, be honest with you, sometimes they go on and on and on because they're struggling to get their thoughts out and they're unable to. But uh, it says, the Bible says, Psalm 91, 14, because he has set his love upon me, because he has set his love upon me, because he has set his love upon me, because I can just about prophesy maybe to some of you that you're 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 heading for it you're heading for it and I don't know if it's a sickness I don't know if it's a wreck I don't know what it may be but let me tell you what you are heading for it and you don't even know it but one thing I want to know I want to be able to say sister Brenda that I thank you Lord that you have heard my voice I thank you Lord that I spent that time in prayer it could be one of your children. Let me tell you what, it'll probably be what you expe expect the least. I want to be able to say that I sought the Lord. When he flicked my ear, remember your teachers? My aunt was a principal, boys, and she had good aim with that finger. Frink, right on my ear. Ugh. I was the greatest disappointment in my family. Trust me, I had brothers that gone on to get education degrees. One owns a, a software company and all these things. And then there's Donnie. That's what he used to call me, Donnie. <laughs> I just see Brother Gary just shake. When I was a little kid, I wondered, well, what are they shaking their heads for? <laughs> it's not that I couldn't do it. I just wouldn't do it. But sometimes we can say that about Christians. It's not that they can't do it. They just won't do it. And I'm not trying to, listen, the way to get you to church is not to badger you, to harass you or manipulate you. No, you've got to want to do it. You've got to want to do it. You want to see the Lord? Listen to me. Every step that you take, God will honor. And I don't know if, if one of your children will get sick, but you want to be able to have that confidence this is Lord Jesus, touch my child in Jesus' name. I bind you, devil, every devil of hell. And I'm, please, I'm praying that prayer every morning as I go to work for my son, Lucas. Brother Gary knows him, talented, but he's just running from God. And, and the devil and I, Brother Chris, do battle every morning. I put on the breastplate of righteousness, loins girt about with truth, helmet of salvation, and I'm fighting him in Jesus' name. And the Lord needs to teach us how to fight again, not to just lay down and take it. You're, <laughs> you're going to go through that. You're going to face that. Might be something with your spouse. Or your job or your health. And you're going to need Jesus then. You're going to need Jesus then. I'd rather every already have that part of it wrapped up, Brother Clyde. I want to have that. That's not a question, sister. Hallelujah. Jesus loves me, and I love him. There's no controversy there. We love each other, and nothing's going to get in the way. So I call upon his name in confidence. In Jesus' name, Lazarus, rise up. Lazarus, get up. Because I enjoy. He enjoys it. He wants to raise things from the dead. Lord, if you'd been here, why did you do this? Why did you, you ever say that to the Lord? Why did this thing happen? Why on earth did this happen? That you can see my glory. That you can see my glory. 
that you can see. If uh, somebody, you, you can come to musicians if you want, if you don't want to come, but every, high, every head bowed and every eye closed because I want to pray for you. I don't know what, t- what time is it right now. Go ahead and say it. it's not a sin. It's 12 o'clock. How about that? Isn't God good? <laughs> Got you to shout. <laughs> I tell you, what, folks, the spirit of the living God, he doesn't need. I love church music and I love good music. I love anointed music. I get to hear it a whole lot in my house. But I'll tell you what, what Jesus need is open ears right now. And you listen to me because I believe the waters are troubled right here. And I want to pray for somebody. And I want to tell you something that the Lord's been speaking to my heart all this week. And there's probably more than one. But there's a young lady in our midst right now. And this is exactly how he said it to me. There's a young lady who's going to be in your midst. And she's talking to the Lord. She's been thinking about second chances. Second chances, maybe some things have fallen through and you're just, you're just your heart and life, you're just full of disappointment. And the Lord says that everything's happened up to this point. It's happened for a reason. And it's to bring you to this point. And it's, 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 it's taught you to be disappointed in, in the things of this world, a bad choice, and to be, be excited about what I'm going to do in your life. Is there, if, if you like to raise your hand or even stand, if you're really bold, you'll stand. But I'd like to say, yes, brother, pray for me. Pray for me or I experience the death. I know who to pray for, but that's up to you. That's up to you. Hallelujah. Is there anybody that'd like to say, just pray for me, just for the things that I'm going through, or anybody that has a need right now, just go ahead and raise your hand. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for those hands. Jesus understands. It's not important that I know. It's not important that we get up to this altar because the same spirit that's up here at this altar, he's in between those pews right now. Hallelujah. And his eye is on the sparrow. His eye is upon your life. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord, that you've heard me. I thank you, Lord, that you've heard me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. As we're all seeking the Lord right now, we're getting ready to close with this verse of Scripture. Really important. If you get a chance, commit it to your memory, please. It's Romans chapter 8, verse 11. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by the spirit that dwelleth in you. That word dwell means two things. It means to reside and remain. Jesus is looking for some place not only to visit, but to live. And let me tell you what. I've been in some services where some, I've, I've not had music and I've not had a lot of things. But one thing I did, I know that I had the spirit. And sometimes they were touchy and they were not easy. But I know what God's voice is. And I know what when he speaks. Hallelujah. I want us to do something right now. And I invite you to please come out. That's all I'm going to say about it tonight. And I've gotten you out really early. Thank you very much. Jesus is not going to make you. He's just going to invite you. The rest is up to you. Let's all stand. Can we do that? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let's, let's just worship the Lord just for a minute. Can we do that? Because he's worthy of that. Jesus is worthy this morning. And I tell you what, he saw the hands that went up. I'm not looking at anybody right now, but he saw that hand and he heard your heart's cry. He heard your heart's cry. So I think that you should just thank him right now, just as if he had already taken care of that thing. Because you're going to wish you had, because Jesus is undertaken. So let's worship the Lord right now. I thank you, Jesus, for answered prayer. I thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do. I thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do in this place, Lord. And I thank you, Lord, for the testimonies that we're going to hear of answered prayer. Thank you for it, Jesus. Thank you for it, Lord. Brother Chris, this time I'd like to hand it back to you, brother. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, folks. God is so good, isn't he? And we want to hear reports because we know God's done something here this morning. You, you might think, well, I didn't see nothing happen. God works in mysterious ways. And you're going to go home and you say, I cannot 
set on this, I got to let God know about it. I got to let the people know about it. So seek your heart. Uh, we want you to come back tonight, like Brother Don said, and uh, we're going to take care of the minister. But if you're not, if you're not going to be here tonight for some odd reason, and you would like to give anything towards our brother, leave it in the, in the plates on the way out. Okay? Yes. I know that. You heard my brother, but we, God said that he'd take care of his own. And if you want to bless him, then you do so. And he'll do whatever he has to do with that. All right? So all hearts clear. Don't forget tonight and uh, invite somebody. Bring a friend. Don't depend on the streaming. We never know when that's going to not work. Okay? So don't say... I'm going to sit home and watch, watch it on, TV, on the, my phone or on my laptop. Come on back. We need you. Okay? All hearts clear? Let's all pray. Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for another opportunity uh, to be in your house. We thank you for the word that you have given us, Lord. And, Lord, we know it's not going to be uh, returned void. We know that we're going to hear results, Lord. And, Lord, we just ask you to uh, not dismiss us, but go with us. Bring us back again tonight, Lord. And we'll just give you all the praise, all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.